brand new garage. So now this week we're going to, uh, well, bolt the motor together. I got all the heads cleaned up, I got all the cylinders cleaned up, and we kind of took some measurements last week and found out that my head and cylinder for number one was no good. And One thing I learned about these magnesium blocks is they kind of move a little bit so, you know, the spigots aren't actually perfectly level. And that's kind of going to be a problem, and not only that, you know, the height has kind of changed on each cylinder. So that's not a good thing. Typically what I would want to do would be to strip this thing down and send it out for, well, what they call a line bore. And obviously I didn't need that because everything's free. But what they would do would be that they would kind of deck the spigots and then it would provide a perfectly flat surface so that you could get one size of copper gasket in there and uh, you'd be good to go. So that's all that I have here. Um, I'm going to kind of have to kind of massage it all together and take some deck height measurements and we'll find out exactly how much space we need for everything to be level. Now one thing it says in Dempsey's book is it says if you've got a lot of time just kind of put it together, pre-assemble everything, stick the cams in dry and make sure it doesn't bind because if there's a problem, especially on an experimental engine or something like I'm doing here, if the cam binds that means the cam carrier is being bent in some way and that's not a good situation and well I kind of did that myself. I didn't really think I was going to have a problem and I glued it all up and well, I'll show you what happened there. Alright, I got the cam tower torqued up, got the heads torqued up, want to put the cam in and check it. Just want to do this dry. Yeah, that that's not right. way too tight. So I think I'm going to start loosening stuff up until, well, it gets free again. Wow, <laughs> spins really freely and actually has some play in there. So uh, yeah, definitely something wrong with, you know, the, the maybe the case. Um, Something here is maybe I have to add a shim or something like that. I don't know. Let's break it down and look at it. So you can see I put the Loctite 574 in it, I glued it up, and you can see how tight that thing was. Uh, 1, 2, and 3 were really bad, and uh, you know, 4, 5, and 6, it was a little tight compared to, you know, just sticking it in there freely, but nothing was spinning very well, and actually I kind of freaked out because I didn't really know what was going on there. Once I really thought about it, you know, I determined that, well, maybe the cylinders aren't at the right height. Now, how you torque this thing down, of course, if you didn't went through that before, you uh, actually kind of torque the cam carrier to the top of the heads, and then you torque the heads down to the block. So, if uh, you don't have the right shims in here, well, what's going to happen is it's going to distort that cam tower, and that cam's going to bind like that. 
So let's go back to the bench and we'll check out some shims I'm going to use for, well, the cylinder spigots and we'll figure out how to take a measurement to get the deck height, make sure everything's level and even, and bolt it back together dry this next time. All right, here's what I'm talking about here. So these are your typical, what they call sh shims, you know, they're kind of a, a deck shim, I guess, is what it would do, would be, kind of goes in between the block and the cylinder, and it provides the correct spacing for the cam tower. So, you know, we have a problem with that, since that thing was binding. This is the stock ones you get. These are quarter millimeter, and uh, of course, this is a half millimeter. Of course, it's twice as thick. Here's a real thick one. This is a one millimeter. So what you can do is you can actually stack these things to get, you know, the distance you need. And that involves a measurement of deck height. So we'll just have to take a combination of these things, measure each cylinder from front to back and side to side, and then figure out what kind of size shim we need here. We've got enough sizes to where we should be able to stack them together. You don't want to stack too many of them together, for instance, that's why I got the half an inch or half a millimeter here, because um, you really don't want to put two of these together. If you don't have to, you just keep one shim. And then also we'll be using something like this, which is, uh, this is a Yama Lube. They make all kinds of different stuff like this. It's kind of a flexible gasket material. It remains a little bit flexible, and this is going to keep the oil from oozing out of here if this isn't perfectly flat. So now, to understand what I'm trying to do here, um, you simply can't just take a straight edge and put it on here because we're talking about tolerances of, you know, a quarter of a millimeter is going to be enough to add another shim. Maybe a half a millimeter would too, be too much and would make that cam bind. You're never gonna tell that by using a straight edge on this, nor the heads. You just can't measure that kind of uh, accuracy. But what you can do is you can use a crankshaft as a reference. Because crankshaft's always going to be on the same plane. And as long as your pistons are at full top dead center at the top of the cylinder, you should be able to take a measurement on where the wrist pin sits on the front and the rear and see how your cylinder is sitting in there. So that's my idea. I think that's what I'm going to do. And I'll measure each one of these and compare them. And then figure out what kind of shim I need underneath them. And figure out whether or not they're completely flat. Okay, we're going to use the depth part of the caliper here. So set to millimeters, zero that out. You're just catching just the edge of the cylinder and measuring down to the piston. This one says uh, 1.04. There's the front here. The rear is at uh, 0.98. So this looks pretty good. What do you want? I want to aim for one millimeter. This one's pretty good. So I uh, guess I'll go on to this rear one here. Okay, this is 1.03. Then 1.02 on the front here. So. I'll take a measurement on the side of this. And 0.93. So those are all within tolerance. So I think we can go ahead and uh, assume this one here is good too. Um, I actually did have to add a shim to this center one here. So this is a half millimeter shim and this is a three quarter millimeter. So I'll kind of move on to the front here. I expect to see more issues. But then when we get them all measured up, they should all be the same height. And I think what I'm going to do is I'll bolt it all up, torque it down with the correct shims here, and then um, well, see if the cam binds again.
so I got it pretty much together now and uh, I've got the cam gear swinging. Swinging away. Anyway, so now what I want to do is I want to get the cams in it and see if they bind at all. Really nervous about this, you know, because as I said, I had to add certain shims and then I had to kind of massage the spigot a little bit in places to make sure the thing fits flat. And uh, well, let's try, um, let's try one, two, three. Once again, it's dry. Oh, wow. Wow, look at that. I can turn it with like one finger almost. But um, wow, that fits really good. And so, um, well, I guess I'll try the other one. Wow, and same story here. Spins really freely. Probably needs some lubrication, of course, you can hear that. But, um, wow, same kind of thing. I don't really have a, um, a, a gauge where I can measure uh, torque or anything like that, but um, I would say if you're, <laughs> this isn't binding, feels real free. Now I have to take it completely back apart and, ugh. All right, now I'll turn down uh, one more look at my spigots here. They're pretty smooth, but I'm still gonna put that, uh, that uh, special Yamaha silicone sealant on those things. Probably gonna put it on both sides of the gasket here. But um, probably not gonna film too much of this. Done this many, many times before, and gonna have to maybe pull up, put in my, uh, well, my oil return tubes, and then of course the, um, the, sh the heat shields that go on underneath, that go on before these before I put that uh, the cam carrier on and well all looks pretty good from here ready to go together one more time I got it done now, so I got one, two, three in. You can also see that while well, I didn't forget the oil return tubes, nor did I forget the heat shields. Now, if you forget these, you gotta take it all back apart again. Trust me, I know how that works. And uh, well, let's check and see if this cam fits. Now, you gotta remember, number one was the one had all that crap in it, and also the one where I massaged the spigots quite a bit. This turns with just two fingers. It's really easy. In fact, you can see that if I wiggle this up and down, there's just a little tiny bit of play in there, which there wasn't any before, of course, because the thing was binding. So, wow, this is really great. And also, one more thing I wanted to do was, you know, kind of spin it around and see if it spins freely, which it really didn't before. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Well, I've come a long way since, uh, since you know, I first had that binding problem. Probably worked on this about a week or two, you know, trying to get order the right shims and everything like that to get it to operate like this. But, man, this is great news, and now I'm ready to put the chain cases on. And then we'll time the cams, and, uh, of course, we'll put the valve train in as we need it to time the cams. We'll do that next time, so if you get anything out of this, give me a like, and, well, subscribe to me if you can, and... Oh, this is coming right along.